species are being produced, does that support creation or evolution? Are the kinds mentioned in Genesis the same as today's species? Speciation and the original biblical kinds. What's the connection today on Creation Magazine Live? Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Now, last week we discussed speciation and why it does not support uh, evolution. Well, rapid speciation, uh, and, uh, but fits well with creation. And this is, this is, of course, a huge topic within the creation evolution debate. And, and we're going to continue this discussion this week, uh, focusing now on, on how speciation relates to the original biblical kinds. You'll often hear creationists say, hey, God right. created these kinds of creatures to reproduce after their own kinds. Now, if you, if you missed last week's show, uh, you, you, you can see it online. The same is true of all our previous episodes, of course. Yeah. But for that one specifically, just go to creation.com slash CML4-19, season 4. Uh, episode 19. Episode 19. Yeah. So let's start with a bit of a review. Uh, speciation is typically hailed by evolutionists as one of their most powerful evidences. Right. right? You, you demonstrate speciation, you've demonstrated evolution. Right. Uh, it's the claim that a single, a single interbreeding group of living things can split up into two groups that no longer mix within themselves. Right. And, and thus it's technically a new species. Uh, they claim that this observation verifies Darwin's origin of species. It leads to the diversity of life on Earth from a single cell. Right. Now many evolutionists when asked uh, for the best evidence for evolution will often give examples of speciation. Yeah. For example, uh, Darwin's finches. Of course, that's a popular one. Uh, Drosophila, uh, fruit flies. The hawthorn fly. Uh, three spine sticklebacks. Uh, Tennessee cave salamanders. And of course, there's all sorts of different examples that they would use, and this is speciation. Okay. Now, by the way, notice that all of these aren't uh, all good examples of speciation. For example, Darwin's finches uh, were probably the same species, even though they had right. different yeah. looks and, and stuff like but that. But they'll bring up a list like that anyway. Right. Now, when presented with a list uh, like this, the first things we need to ask are, does speciation really happen, and does it really support evolution, or does it fit better with creation? And we explored those questions last week, and we'll continue, right. uh, of course, this week. Yeah, and so the answer is, <laughs> yes, speciation happens, and yes, it fits with biblical creation, and it provides powerful evidence against evolution, as we'll, uh, we'll see in a few minutes here. Yeah, that's right. So there's, there's no doubt that those uh, answers, of course, will, will shock some of the people watching here. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. creationists right. admitting speciation, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, especially if you missed last <laughs> week's episode, you want to get to that. However, if, uh, we, we can take it a step further by saying that not only does speciation fit with the biblical creation model, it's actually required by it, if you really think it through. Yeah, the reason is that without speciation, Noah would have had to take, uh, for example, all the different varieties of dogs, for example, both the wild dogs, wolves, dingoes, coyotes, chihuahuas, all those kinds of jackals and so on, yeah. plus all of the domestic dogs, over 650 varieties of domestic dogs, right. there wouldn't have been enough room in the ark. Uh, instead, Noah took representatives of the original kinds with him. Right. And uh, possibly as high as 16,000 individual animal, animals, 8,000 pairs, something like that, which then after the flood became the millions of species that we see today. So That's speciation right. happened. It, it, it has it to happen. it must have occurred quickly. And it must have occur occurred quickly, yeah. By the way, 16,000 animals would have fit on board the ark with plenty of room to spare. Right. The right. ark was, was plenty large enough, and we've we, done shows in the past on that as well. Exactly. You know, even today, creationists are often misrepresented as believing that God created all the species we have today uh, just as they are today in yes. the beginning, right? Yes. The, and that, that's a concept called fixity of species. And the Bible doesn't teach this, but university no. professors often show students that a new species has arisen, right? Uh, for, for fruit flies, for example. Yep. And, and then claim that this dis disproves the Genesis account of creation. But fixity of species originated in, in ancient Greece. Not with the Bible. Not with the Bible. Bible scholars, even before Darwin, realized that animals could change within the kind. But that doesn't violate what the Bible says. So the bottom line is, living things do change over time. 
creationists wrote on this long before Darwin. For example, <laughs> Edward Blythe yeah. uh, wrote a scientific paper uh, talking about um, natural selection from a creationist viewpoint, yeah. 20 some years before, before Darwin. Darwin. Yeah. yeah, It's always been uh, an important part of the biblical understanding of the living world and natural selection does not aid the evolutionary process. So said in another way, the type of change that scientists observe in living things will never evolve a single cell into humans. It's just, it's the wrong direction of, of, of change that That's we see. That's right, yeah. Now, natural selection obviously plays a, a major role in this. It ties in very closely with, the, with this week's topic. Yeah. And we've discussed that on previous shows. You can go to creation.com slash CML2-02 to get a catch up on, uh, on natural selection. And we'll be right back with even more. Atheists in the United Kingdom have launched a public campaign to preach their message of unbelief by using advertising space on public buses. These buses are emblazoned with the slogan, There's probably no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. Some people find this slogan rather odd. If these atheists are so confident God doesn't exist, why does the slogan say, there's probably no God? Atheists have responded by pointing out that they can't say, there's no God, because that would be taking a faith position. But perhaps even more puzzling is the second part of the slogan that reads, now stop worrying and enjoy your life. This prompted one journalist, skeptical of religious belief, to write, what on earth is there to celebrate? We're talking about death, about not existing, being wiped out forever, and it can happen any time. If that's not cause for worry, what is? It appears atheism is devoid of answers and devoid of hope. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, welcome to Creation Magazine Live. If you just tuned in, we're talking about um, the, the kinds and speciation and the biblical kinds. What's the connection? Uh, let's get into it. And, and all that good stuff. Now, let's, let's clarify how natural selection uh, can lead to speciation. First, right. uh, what is a species? The Oxford Dictionary defines a species as, quote, a group of living organisms consisting of similar individuals capable of exchanging genes or interbreeding. So there's a definition of what a species is. Right. So through normal reproduction, there are differences in living things. For example, the offspring of dogs don't look exactly like their parents. Right. Human children don't look exactly like their parents, etc. Uh, there are genetic differences between parents and offspring. And so varieties that are less suited to their environment may be culled out and these varieties more suited to uh, their environment tend to thrive in that environment while those less suited of course don't and that's basically a brief uh, description of natural selection. The right. ones that yeah. are fit, uh, are more adapted in that environment survive and the ones that don't, don't. Yeah, now speciation requires uh, the differences in individuals to become so great, so these differences come out, right. and then they can be separated. The, the differences need to be so great that they can no longer interbreed and natural selection uh, plays a role there where speciation can happen is if a group of living things exists across different environments, they can become adapted to those different environments to the extent that they become so different genetically that they can no longer produce viable offspring and presto, you have a new species. Right. So we agree with the evolutionists that this yeah. process can happen because yep. you can observe it. Yes. <laughs> right? It's observational yeah, it's, science. It's We're happening. not talking about historical yep. science. And, and creationists have always agreed, going back to Carol uh, Linnaeus, uh, from the 1700s. He, he invented the biological classification system, right. and he also believed in a creator, by the way. Um, As many of the founding fathers of sci science did. Exactly. So the question is, does this process, speciation, um, does it violate the phrase repeated 10 times in the book of Genesis that living things were created to reproduce after their kind? Right, and so that really depends on how you define created kind. Mm. I mean, uh, Linnaeus in initially thought that the created kinds were equivalent to species, right. uh, but uh, later came to recognize that the created kinds could include a number of species and even different gen genera. Right. Um, the original created kinds at the time of creation would have been separate species because they were all reproductively isolated, right. but not at the time of Linnaeus and, and certainly not today. Uh, so, the, um, uh, so today, the biblical kind is not the same as species since speciation has happened. Right. So you can't, you can't equivocate those two terms. Created kind is not the same as species. Right. 
So that leads to the question often posed to creationists, um, if the created kind is not equivalent to today's species, then what is it equivalent to? Is what it is the genus? That? Is it family? In reality, it's not quite as simple as relating it to today's classification system. No, no, there isn't a one-to-one -one comparison really for, for every group of living things. Determining what the original kinds were leads to the science of barominology. Uh, uh, bara min, uh, from the Hebrew bara means to create, and min means kind, so bara, bara minology, essentially. Yep. A term coined by creationist biologist Dr. Frank Marsh in the 1940s. Uh, bara minology is the study of the created kinds. There are significant challenges to determining which of today's creatures belong to a single created kind. And we'll give you some examples of, uh, of those challenges in, uh, in 30 seconds. What are the theological consequences of adding millions of years to Genesis? How does it impact doctrines such as the gospel, sin, the atonement? Refuting compromise is the most powerful biblical and scientific defense of a straightforward view of Genesis. Loaded with scientific support for a recent creation in six real days, it demolishes all attempts to twist the biblical text in order to insert millions of years, bringing clarity into an area usually mired in confusion. Must reading for Bible college students and anyone involved in church leadership or teaching. Get your copy at creation.com. All right, welcome back. On this week's episode, we're talking about how understanding uh, speciation can help us get a clearer picture of what the original kinds were that God created. Right. Now, hybridization events give us clues as to how organisms today derive from original created kinds. Yes. For example, if two creatures can hybridize with true fertilization, the two creatures are descended from the same kind. By extension, if either of those two creatures can hybridize with a third creature, all three of them are members of the same kind. And here's an example of hybridization. In 1985, Hawaii's Sea Life Park reported the birth of a calf from the mating of a false killer whale and a bottlenose dolphin. The birth surprised the park staff since the parents are rather different in, in appearance. Here yeah. we have a hybrid between different genera in the same family. Right, yeah, however, if two creatures uh, cannot hybridize, that doesn't necessarily mean that they weren't the original created kind. They weren't right. part of the same kind. Uh, we all know of couples, for example, who can't have children. Right. That doesn't mean that the husband and wife are, are, are a separate kind, a uh, separate species. It might be a joke there somewhere, but uh, <laughs> um, degenerative changes uh, from yes. things like mutations and other things, like rearranging chromosomes can often lead to reproductive challenges and ca cause breeding barriers in individuals that yep. uh, are otherwise identical. Uh, that's, that's part of the challenge facing anyone working in barominology to try to determine what the original kinds were. Right. Uh, the offspring, in this case, in the case of the, the bottlenose dolphin hybrid there, is fertile. The hybrid female has since mated with a dolphin to produce a live baby. Right. Kind of interesting. Therefore, the, these two genera are from the same biblical kind. Other genera look much more alike than the two that produced this particular hybrid. Uh, th this offspring in Hawaii here, this suggests that all 12 living genera may have been descended from one original kind. So right. hybridization experiments are, are, are leading to that kind of conclusion. Right. And if the hybridizing species are from, are from different genera in a, in a family, it suggests that the whole family might have come from the one created kind. Right. So if the genera in, uh, are in different families within an order, it suggests that maybe the whole order may have derived from the ori originated uh, created kind as well. Yeah, so you can see how that kind of works with hybridization experience to try to yep. try to work our way to a clearer picture of the original kinds. Another example from the cat kind. Uh, the, a, a male lion uh, and a female tiger can produce to, prea uh, to create a liger. Yes. The reverse cross produces a tigon. Uh, such, <laughs> such a crossing doesn't normally happen in the wild because most lions live in Africa and most tigers live in Asia. Right. Also, lions and tigers just don't usually mix their, their enemies in the wild. Yeah, however, uh, the Institute of Greatly Endangered and Rare Species in Myrtle Beach in South, South Carolina yeah. raised a tiger and, and, a, and a, a lion together, and Arthur, the lion, and Ayla, <laughs> the tigress, became good friends and bred to produce Samson and Sudan. And uh, two huge male ligers, yeah, and, and Samson, Samson's 3.7 meters, which is 12 feet tall on his hind legs. So if he stands up, he's 12 feet tall, he weighs 500 kilograms, 1,100 pounds, and he can run 80 kilometers or 50 miles per hour. <laughs> it's like a superhero cat. That's a, that's a big cat. <laughs> 
Now, in, in this diagram here, you can see lions and tigers belong to the same genus, uh, Panthera, and that also includes the leopards. Mm -hmm. the, the genus Felis includes the mountain lion and numerous other species of small cats, including the domestic cat. Uh, the cheetah, on the other hand, is in the genus uh, Asinonyx and belongs to a different subfamily. Thus, the, the, the genera Panthera, Felis, and Asinonyx may represent descendants of three original created cat kinds, or maybe even two, uh, Panthera, Felix, and Asinonyx, or maybe even one cat kind. The extinct saber-tooth tiger may have been a, a different created kind altogether. It's right. kind of interesting. We're just not sure, right? The yeah. Panthera uh, cat lacks a, a hyoid bone in the back of the tongue compared to the Felis. Uh, Asinonyx ha has the hyoid, but yeah. lacks the ability to retract its claws, for example. So the, the differences between the cats could have arisen through a loss of genetic information right. due to mutations yeah. or you know loss of the bone or loss of claw retraction, something like that. Note that this has nothing to do with molecules to man evolution. Right. Molecules to man evolution uh, requires the addition of new information, not the loss of information, which of course we'd expect in a fallen world. You know, um, that maybe you had something in the past, but now you don't have it. That's, that's going in the opposite direction of what evolution needs to, right. to show here. Yeah, and scientists can imagine how these different cat kinds today, with the ability to ret ret retract, retract claws or not, yeah. th that could easily be understood as a downhill change. Right. Not an uphill change that evolution yeah, requires. It's kind of like a light switch. You know, it turns on and off. It's got that ability, but then, then and it breaks. And it's only in the on position. And right. It doesn't matter what you do; it's it's just on. Right. So well, it used to work, and it doesn't work. That's a degenerative change. That yeah, it's fits changed. With everything starts very good and is going downhill. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. For more information on this on this topic, speciation and so on, go to creation.com/speciation. And now that link is going to take you to the speciation Q and A page, and you'll have article after article, all right. kinds of examples of speciation, rapid speciation, and all kinds of more information there on creation.com. There's many, many, many other topics as well, right. and uh, the, the the website is just a huge uh, resource of information. Over 10,000 articles uh, there on creation.com. So yeah. have a look at that, and we'll be back with more on speciation and the original biblical kinds in just a minute. It has long been claimed that monkeys typing randomly could eventually type out the complete works of Shakespeare. Plymouth University researchers recently installed a computer in a monkey enclosure to see what would happen. After a month, the six monkeys in question had produced five pages of indecipherable text. This result isn't surprising, though, because the monkeys mainly used the computer as a toilet and trampoline. This ridiculous research reminds me of the mathematician Sir Fred Hoyle's analogy to illustrate the likelihood of a single biopolymer necessary for life arising by chance without a creator. He likened it to a hundred thousand billion 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 blind people each solving a Rubik's Cube puzzle simultaneously. And this is just one biopolymer. The simplest life forms have hundreds of biopolymers. Despite these odds, however, many people insist life arose by chance because they don't like the idea of a creator. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Well, if you just tuned in, we're talking about the challenges in determining the, what the biblical kinds were when God originally created and uh, what we see today. Yeah, 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 speciation, all that good stuff. Now, one of the biggest differences between biblical history, uh, the, the true history of the universe, and the evolutionary billions of years history is that everything began very good. You read about that, and God right. describes this world very good in Genesis 1, verse 31, the last verse of Genesis, and it's now under a curse. It's running downhill. Uh, evolution says everything began with, with disorder and it's going uphill. You start with hydrogen and end up with people, yeah. uh, essentially. Yeah. And so when evolutionists see things like speciation and they try to fit it into what they believe about, about history, billions of years going uphill, that things have gone uphill from molecules to man, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to fit that in. The problem is scientists just don't see that happening. Right. They don't see those things going uphill. Hey. We see downhill changes all the time. Yeah, you but, can believe it if you want to, but you believe it on faith because it's not an observational something you derive directly from seeing. science. It's yeah. not what we're seeing. The, the, um, yeah, the, uh, Christians don't need to do that. We don't need to... Uh, the observations from science, we can just accept them. They fit in very nicely. Speciation fits in very nicely. Uh, for example, this week's topic, it fits beautifully with what the Bible says, that God created everything very good and it's going downhill. Speciation is a downhill change that scientists observe. That's right. Now, um, 
these changes that we see, though, they're degenerative, yeah. right? They're yeah. often the result of mutations. And mutations destroy previously functioning, uh, you know, yeah, information with genetic in <laughs> instructions. So even in a big picture sense, you, you begin with uh, all the creatures within a kind successfully interbreeding. And after speciation, some within the original group can no longer interbreed. Well, that's a downhill change. That's going downhill, That's yeah. That's not a yeah. positive thing, right? It's in a big picture sense, it fits with the Bible. Exactly. But, uh, other examples of hybridization include uh, mules, z donks, and zorses. You can see some pictures here. Uh, crossing a male donkey and a female horse produces a mule. The reverse is called a hinny. Uh, hybrids between zebras and horses, uh, that would be a zors, <laughs> and zebras and donkeys, then you get z donks and zonkeys, yep. also readily occur. Those things happen. <laughs> Some creationists have reasoned that because these hybrids are sterile, uh, the horse, yep. the donkey, and zebra must be separate created kinds. However, not only does this uh, go beyond the biblical text, yep. it, it's overwhelmingly likely that horses, donkeys, and zebras, uh, six species of uh, ikus, I guess that's the way you'd pronounce that, are the descendants of one of the created kinds which left the ark because they can hybridize. They can hybridize, yeah. yeah. Infertility in offspring can be due to re rearrangements of chromosomes. That's a common cause, actually, right. in different species, uh, such that the, the, the changes in different species have the same DNA information, but the chromosomes of different species have been rearranged so that they no longer produce a viable offspring. Right. Such non-evolutionary downhill changes, again, within a kind, cannot be used as, uh, as evidence for evolution. Um, uh, the, but it doesn't mean they weren't the same original kind just because they're sterile. Right. Here's another example. Veterinarians in the United Arab uh, Emirates successfully crossbred a camel and a llama. Yeah. And the kama, named Rama, so Rama <laughs> the kama, has the cloven hooves of a llama and the short ears and tail of a camel. The scientists hope to combine the best qualities of both into the one animal, the superior fleece and calmer temperament of the llama, with the larger size of the camel. So llamas and the camel belong to the same original kind. Yeah, hybridization experiments there. We're getting a clearer picture of that, yeah. that original kind. Here's another example. Jenne, a hybrid snake. Jenne resulted from a cross between an albino corn snake and an albino king snake in a reptile park in California. The parents, the, the, the parent snakes belong to the same snake family. So this hybrid suggests that the many species and, and, and genera of snakes in this family today could have come from the same created kind. Right. Now, for more information on all these examples, you can go to creation.com slash liger and uh, get lots, lots more of examples of the kind of stuff that we're talking about here and see more examples. Right. I mean, the bottom line is God created all kinds or basic types of creatures and plants with the ability to produce variety in their offspring. Yes. And, yep. and these varieties uh, come from recombinations of the existing genetic information created at the beginning through the marvelous uh, reproductive method created by God. And since the fall, Genesis 3, yep. uh, some variations also occurred through degenerative changes caused by mutations. Mutations are spelling mistakes when DNA is making copies. Right. You get these errors, these mistakes. And for example, the reduction of wing size in the uh, the cormorants of, of the Galapagos Islands. Degenerative for change. Degenerative yeah. change. Fits with the Bible. Yep. Uh, the, the variations allow for the descendants of the created kinds to adapt to different environments to fill the earth as God commanded. Uh, if genera rep represent different kinds, then Noah took less than 20,000 animals with him on board the ark, and that fits, that, that just that works out with the story of Noah and the flood. You wouldn't have had to take all those animals on the ark, and we'll say more about this in just a little while. The vigorous promotion of evolution as established fact is causing many Christians to question the biblical creation account. And some non-Christians won't consider Christianity because they believe the Bible has been disproved by science. That's where Creation Magazine comes in. Creation Magazine is a family-friendly publication packed with cutting-edge science that supports the Bible, presented in an easy-to-understand format by some of the leading experts in their fields of study. Visit creation.com to subscribe today. Okay, we've been talking about speciation and the original biblical kinds and so on. A brand new book that we just produced, when it, as, as at the time we're taping this anyway, yeah. uh, is Evolution's Achilles Heels, the book and documentary DVD and, and Blu-ray. Uh, it's, a, it's a master blaster evolution destroying book and, DVD <laughs> and documentary. You can get that at 30% off. Just if you order it online, go to creation.com and use this coupon code CML. E-A-H, Creation Magazine Live, Evolution's Achilles Heels, you get 30% off. This is, this is a, a, 
an evolution wiping out, <laughs> blowing out of the water. What, what terms do you want to use there? Well, yeah, I mean, it, a, lot of, a lot of our resources, of course, supported the biblical text, right? Here's how to explain yeah. the biblical text with, with science and stuff. So this is, this is like a resource that actually puts the evolutionist on the defensive. You explain this, 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 and this. Right. And, it, and it just demonstrates how evolution yeah. is kind of like, you know, the emperor has no clothes. Yeah, the, the, it's a fantastic book. Yep. You can get 30% off. Just use that code when you check out. That's right. Now, we often uh, talk about things that are in the news. And, of course, right now, at the time of this taping, where a lot of people are concerned about Ebola. Yes. Uh, yeah. a, a, a virus, um, you know, and... and uh, is Ebola, you know, did, did God create that? Is this the result of the fall? That's one of the questions that come up, isn't it? That's right. Is this really bad virus that's killing a whole bunch of people, started in West Africa. How, how does it, what was it doing in a, in a good world, in a, in a world that was very good originally? How did it get here? That's right, because, um, you know, this, this virus is unlike bacteria. They're, they're non-living entities, right? They, they, yeah. they, because they, they can't reproduce on, they own, uh, on their own, that they need to uh, hijack the, the copying machinery, really, of, of living things. And, uh, and then they're really tiny. And so why would God have created these types of things and, and they can do such bad things if God's a good God? These are the right. types of questions yeah. we often run into. And this is, we're, we're reading an article now from the website, go to creation.com slash Ebola, and you can follow along here. Um, one of the, the, uh, the, the parts in the article, uh, well, yeah, what, what should we talk about here? Why did God make viruses? Yeah. Why would, okay, here's what Dr. Dr. Sarfati wrote. But what use could viruses have in a perfect world since they must hijack a living thing's reproductive machinery? They can't reproduce on their own. They have to hijack right. another bacteria or some other cell to reproduce. Some clues to possible benign pre-fall roles for viruses have been gleaned from functions that they have even today. Viruses have a number of useful functions even now, including transporting genes among plants and animals, keeping soil fertile, keeping water clean, and regulating gases in the atmosphere. They also have a role in killing cancer cells. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, so th there are benefits to viruses. I mean, sometimes, yes. you know, when people think of uh, bacteria or viruses, it's just negative, right? You just have this right. negative reaction. But the fact is, bacteria and viruses are known to do many good things. For example, if you didn't have bacteria in your body doing proper things, you'd die, <laughs> yes. right? It's very yeah. important. So all viruses aren't negative. Uh, some of them are, and that's, we would say, because of the result of the fall. Um, you know, in particular, uh, right from the article here, Ebola virus seems to have a symbiotic relationship with fruit bats. Mm. Many papers have the obligatory or, uh, evolutionary slant, but the actual evidence is that bats have more copies of genes that code for DNA repair machinery, and this may be due to a benign role of the virus. Bats benefit uh, by almost never developing tumors because the repair machinery would correct any damaging, uh, damaged genes resulting in the uncontrolled cell reproduction of malignant cancer. Yeah. So, there's so we can think of positive roles for that. If you want more of this kind of information, there's some, some great stuff. You can, you can get Creation Magazine on, on the, the content that we get for this show. It comes from the magazine to a large extent and the website. Get Creation Magazine into your home. It's a faith-building tool. You can look at a free version of it online, creation.com slash freemag, and have a look at a uh, free digital copy of Creation Magazine. We'll see you next week.